Okay, so we're now going to look at some specific uh, categories of grammars that are not as powerful as full-fledged context-sensitive grammars because that would be too difficult to parse and at the same time are more powerful than regular context-free grammars. Uh, and therefore they can capture some types of languages such as a to the nth power, b to the nth power, which essentially is a string of a's followed by a string of, string of b's of the same length, which is something that context-free grammars cannot capture. So before I introduce those, let me first mention briefly the so-called tree substitution grammars, which are actually context-free grammars by equivalent to context-free grammars, before I move on to the ones that are not context-free. So tree substitution grammar it allows you to have terminals that can generate entire tree fragments. And as I mentioned, uh, tree substitution grammars are formally equivalent to context-free grammars. However, the next step up from tree substitution grammars is the so-called tree adjoining grammar, which is more powerful than context-free grammars. And the other example that we're going to look at is called combinatorial categorical grammar, or CCG, which is also more powerful than context-free grammars. Let's look at TAGs or tags first. So they're like tree substitution grammars, but they allow a junction. So what is a junction? Suppose that you have a parse tree with a verb phrase embedded inside it. The adjunction operator allows you to create a new node and to put it inside the tree and push the existing subtree further down. So you have a new verb phrase that gets uh, the original verb phrase as one of its descendants. So this operation cannot be modeled in context-free grammars. And it can be used to generate languages such as a to the nth power, b to the nth power, c to the nth power, or even ww, which are the so-called cross serial dependencies. So ww is a string that is repeated twice. So for example, the sentence, Mary gave a book and a magazine to Chen and Mike. This is an example of a cross serial dependency because book is associated with Chen and magazine is associated with Mike. So this kind of sentence cannot be generated by context-free grammar, but it can be generated by a tag. So the expressive power is that uh, tags are formally more powerful than CFGs, but at the same time, they're not as powerful as full context-sensitive grammar. Uh, let me show you a little bit of a diversion here. Uh, there is a very interesting game that you can download from uh, the LTAG game website. It's a bunch of cards with uh, productions in three adjoining grammars that you can combine together to form sentences. Uh, one fun thing to notice here is that the original set of cards includes some uh, words that are not appropriate for children. Therefore, there is a small, slightly more PG-rated version of the LTAG game uh, designated for families. You can also download from the same website. So the other category of grammars is called CCG. It's uh, very popular these days uh, for both parsing and for generation. Uh, it involves uh, the introduction of something called a complex type. So complex type is either x forward slash y or x backward slash y. So those complex types take an argument of type y and return an, an object of type x. And the difference between the direction of the slash is that if you have a forward slash x forward slash y, that means that y should appear on the right of x. And if you have x backward slash y, that means that y should appear on the left of x. So here's an example. Uh, you have this simple grammar here. I is the pronoun labeled as noun phrase. Books is another uh, noun labeled as noun phrase. And now we have sleep. So what is the type of sleep? Well, it's a complex type that says that sleep is the kind of thing that if you combine it with a noun phrase on the right-hand side, it will return a sentence. Similarly, the lexicon entry for enjoy is something that if you combine it on the right with a noun phrase, then it will return something of the same complex type as sleep. And here's an example of some sentences. So the sentence I sleep is parsed in the following way. I is a noun phrase. Sleep is S back word slash np, when the two are combined, the result is an s. So I sleep is a valid sentence according to this parse. The sentence I enjoy books, again the example here is of a transitive verb, enjoy gets combined with books by uh, replacing uh, the noun phrase on the right and returning the type on the left. So the type for enjoy books is s backward slash np, and then when that gets combined to the right with i, uh, it becomes S. So this is a very interesting example because it shows you that 
from the S point of view, enjoy books and sleep have the exact same syntactic structure. Again, they're both things that can be combined with the subject to form a sentence. So the expressive power of CCGs is that they can generate uh, the language A to the N, B to the N, C to the N, D to the N uh, for N greater than zero. And this is again something that context-free grammars cannot do. And uh, I want to acknowledge Jonathan Kummerfeld, Aleka Blackwell, and Patrick Littell for the example uh, shown on the slide. So the next topic is going to be very brief. It's about semantic parsing. So everything that we've discussed so far had to deal with syntactic parsing. We wanted to build a syntactic representation of the sentence so that we know what are its uh, subject and verb and direct object and so on. But we never discussed the semantics of the sentence. In the last few years, there has been a lot of interest in semantic parsing for purposes such as uh, question answering, generation, summarization, and so on. So what does semantic parsing look like? Well, it's a very simple idea. Every rule in your grammar is going to be associated not just with a syntactic structure, but also with what is known as compositional semantics. So in compositional semantic, the semantics, the meaning of a word is the word itself. And then the meaning of a combination of words is a formula that tells you how to combine the meanings of the individual words. This is best illustrated with an example. So let's look at this very simple sentence. Javier eats pizza. So in this grammar, Javier is associated with a noun. And the semantics of this noun is just the word itself, the object represented by the word Javier. Uh, eats is represented by uh, the word, I'm sorry, pizza is represented by the meaning of the word pizza. And eats as the verb is represented as a logical formula which corresponds to a lambda function of two arguments x and y where uh, the predicate is eat and x is the entity doing the eating and y is the entity uh, receiving the eating. So at this point, we have to combine this lambda function with its arguments to be able to come up with a grounded uh, expression for the entire sentence. So how does this work? Well, we first have to combine eat and pizza together. And we're going to replace uh, pizza with y. So this is a, what is known as a substitution in formal logic. We're going to replace the lambda function of two arguments, eat x, y, with a new function that has y bound to pizza and still a remaining uh, unbound variable x. So we still have a lambda expression that is looking for a missing argument to be combined with. And this happens at the next stage when we combine this verb phrase node with the noun node for Javier, we get the full meaning of the sentence, which is that eat is the predicate and Javier is substituted for x in this expression and pizza remains as it was before. So the entire semantic representation of the sentence is that we have a predicate called eat with its first argument being Javier, the second argument being pizza. So I'm not going to go into semantic parsing into any more detail, but I want to encourage you to look at uh, some of the recent literature in ACL on this topic as it seems to be one of the hottest areas in NLP in the next few years. So I'm going to conclude this segment with a short uh, link, short set of links uh, to poems on parsing from the Linguistics Olympiad. The ones that I have selected as most relevant to this section are 2D about a two-dimensional parser. This is a poem written by Jason Eisner in the 2013 competition. A one, two, three, uh, a poem written by Noah Smith, Kevin Gimbo, and Jason Eisner for the 2012 uh, problem set. Uh, and then two poems related to, uh, to category uh, combinatorial grammars, uh, CCG and combining categories in talk pissing. Both of those were used in the 2014 competition. And finally, grammar rules, which is a very simple uh, problem about context-free grammars uh, from last year's competition uh, by Andrea Shalley and Pat Littell. So enjoy those problems, and when you've solved them, you can check uh, their solutions on the same website. Oh, and I forgot one more example of a parser for uh, skating figures, uh, also written by Pat Littell from one of the earliest competitions from 2009. So this concludes the section on alternative grammatical formalisms and parsing. Uh, thank you for your attention.